Key features in the neurological exam, solving a puzzle. You are called to the emergency room to examine a 43-year-old man who suffered a seizure for the first time in his life. You are assigned to cut out his medical history and perform a neurological exam. How do you start it? What are critical parts of the exam that you should not miss? Do you feel confident performing it? How do you interpret the findings as a life-threatening situation or not? First of all, don't panic. The neurological exam can be intimidating for many healthcare professionals, but it can be focused on specific disease presentations. Importantly, the neuro exam can help localize a deficit and can aid in generating a differential diagnosis. The exam itself can be tailored based on the patient's presentation and can be used in both routine and emergency settings. To make it easier and more approachable, this video will offer a sequence of steps that you can follow when performing this exam without forgetting any of its key features. So here you are, in front of the patient, ready to start the neurological exam. Taking things step by step can be easier if you recall the seven most critical ones. This is how it will go. First, check mental status. This includes the level of consciousness, orientation, attention, language, and memory. Note that if the patient is not awake and alert, the rest of the exam should be tailored to the change in mental status. Next, evaluate the cranial nerves. Start by checking visual acuity in each eye with the near card or Snellen chart, and visual fields by confrontation in each eye independently with finger count or a red object. Then, evaluate the pupillary light reflexes. Check for pupillary response to light, accommodation, and evaluate for relative afferent pupillary defect. Also, assess movement of extraocular muscles. Now check sensation and motor function of the face. Rub your fingers together near the patient's ears to assess hearing. Then, check for palate slash uvula deviation. Lastly, Test the patient's shoulder shrug and assess tongue movements. For the motor exam, start by inspecting the muscles, assess spoken tone, look for involuntary movements, and finally, test muscle group strength bilaterally. You should also assess for pronator drift. To check sensation, evaluate pinprick, temperature, vibration, and proprioception. Move on to assess the reflexes. Ideally, also evaluate for clonus. For coordination, check each specific maneuver and evaluate coordination and proprioception with the Rombert sign. To end, assess the patient's stance and check their gait. This exam can be tailored to the patient's presentation and you can perform additional tests if needed. Let's return to our patient. The neurologic exam revealed right-sided hemiparesis with increased muscle tone and hyperreflexia. Although these findings are not specific, they suggest a possible left frontal lobe focus. In fact, MRI revealed a meningioma in the left convexity causing mass effect and edema in the left motor cortex. As it was for our patient, the neurological exam is one of the most important tools that physicians have for understanding the nervous system and making differential diagnosis. Also, remember that context is very important. You can perform a thorough evaluation on a new patient in your office. In a patient with altered mental status who cannot fully contribute, you may not be able to complete all the components described in this video. However, a different but comprehensive neurologic exam is still feasible. Practicing the exam in the same way each time will help you become more efficient at localizing lesions and recognizing red flag signs, leading to faster decision making, especially in emergency situations. To learn more about this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com neurobytes.